in order to be hopeful, you actually need to um, resolve within yourself of like, okay, I believe that at, at some some point he is going to make all things new. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And like, this is not ultimately my home, though I'm going to steward it well for the time being. Like, I have a hope um, that that things are going to work out in the end. We win in the end, whatever whatever it looks like right now. Family! Coming in hot today. Coming in hot. Welcome to Simplexity. A little podcast. We take seemingly complex matters and attempt to make them plain and simple. My name is Sammy Foster. Joined with my one and only champion, prized, <laughs> celebrated co-host, one and only Bootsy. Yeah. On this final episode of season number eight. Come on. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Are Back. you are you excited to be done with the season? It's a little. Uh, uh, what are you? What's going on here? Oh no, I I always miss my viewers and listeners. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, for the, our we're we're bringing it in erratically <laughs> timed breaks. <laughs> totally. It's like sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's a year. Yeah. A year. <laughs> and uh, in this case, there's no exception to that rule because we really don't know how long it's going to be. Do we back? How long the break's gonna be? Yeah weeks like six to nine it's oh, a long man. time yeah it's a long time <laughs> i'll be i'll be married when i come back that's, oh yes that's you how will. long it's gonna be we should do an episode at your wedding oh yeah. no, i don't my think so goodness. <laughs> That'd be no, i don't think so old hannah wouldn't go for that <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay we're gonna get into it mm -hmm. it's not that we're gonna end with a doozy i uh i don't want to over promise and under deliver Certainly not, but I do want to get into it, and that is because where we currently find ourselves is post-election, and we did some sort of build-up leading up to the election with a couple subject matters that sort of pointed to and surrounded uh, some of the tensions therein. Election infection. The election infection, yes, we did. You like coming up with names like that. Uh-huh, yeah. I've been a little dry lately, but... um. <laughs> And uh, we'll figure this one out. What do you want to call this one? I have no idea. Let's see where it goes and then figure it Post -election out. Post-election right. infection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Something about, like, I don't know. I was going to say, so like, getting over the infection. Like healed or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Some people don't feel that way, though. Yeah, the antibodies. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So, you know... Boots and I haven't really clearly fleshed this one out. We just talked about the subject matter at hand and what we'd like to discuss. And it's been just a real conversation that he and I have had, very organic, if you will, most of which are. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therein, we have uh, been talking as of late as to really what now is the responsibility for those of us that have voted but moreover, post-election, what is the responsibility of the Jesus follower? Mm -hmm. I, and, and, and let me give a little backdrop to that, to that question. It has been my experience that I've been through enough elections, if you will, that, and I know this was a big one. Let's, let's, let's not downplay it. This one was a big one. I was trying to think, Boots, going back, rewinding the tape a little bit, as to whether or not I felt um, in previous elections the degree of tension, if you will, or polarization. That's always been there. That's always been there, all the more being a follower of Jesus. When it comes to really a presidential election, you feel a sense of, okay, um, you got a rally, or this one's big, or this one has big implications. And um, I, I think that stands true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to deconstruct that thought. Nevertheless, this one in particular came with a completely uh, new weight to it. But what has been consistent in my experience is that when it comes to elections and it comes to certainly the evangelical vote or the way that Christians view an election, there is this temptation following that once it's over, 
there's a bit of a law of where Christians can somewhat resign themselves from the responsibility that they that they need to own to really be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let me, let me explain that. Sometimes it's easier to look at a politician or your desired candidate, what have you, and think that if we, if we vote for them and they are the ones that get elected, it's been my experience that then there's a, a little bit of sort of the rusting in laurels, if you will, um, of where it goes, okay, well now matters will get fixed or resolve will happen or culture will shift or now we're safe or fill in the blanks. And I know I'm being very broad brush and sort of <clears throat> generalistic, but it frightens me that we would take that posture because when I vote and I most certainly applied this perspective to this last election, it is for the reason that I, I voted according to wanting to preserve my religious liberty so that I can fulfill my responsibility. And I wanted a wind at my back, if you will. So I, I, I think, you know, when I voted, I voted according to what sets me up to do what Jesus has called me to do. Because at the end of the day, I'm called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm part of the body of Christ. I am called to love my neighbor and to fulfill the commission on my life. And yet sometimes we resign ourselves from that and place that in the hand of the, the elected official. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Thank you. All right, well, give me some commentary around <laughs> that, Boots. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that, that you just said. I would hope so. <laughs> um, I think what comes to mind for me, it, it's a couple of things. Number one is I almost picture like a football game as, as an analogy to, to what we just experienced with okay. the election. Okay. Let me unpack that for a second. Please. So you have the people, you know, there's this massive buildup of communication and, you know, this side saying, we're going to win. And the other side saying, no, we're going to win. And hey, you need to do your part. Fans, stand up. Like yeah. all that, the, it's the energy, it's the anticipation, it's the buy-in. Like the candidate on the field going. <laughs> yeah. Like Nick Bosa with his <laughs> giant arms. Yeah. Um, he's built like a... Like a brick house. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Um, 49ers fans, shout out. But you have this massive, massive buildup of energy and enthusiasm and anticipation. And then Tuesday hits, the election's over, and you have one side that is very upset. Yep. One side that is very happy. Yep. And probably some people on varying degrees of in between that. Right. Um, and then the question is, well, what do you do now? Because you have you have the, some fans who, to continue with this analogy, they storm the field, they're celebrating, et cetera. Some yeah. people, they left the stadium because they're so sick to their stomachs. Yes. Um, but I think the question that you're posing specifically is what does the Christian do after the, you know, after the energy and, and all this anticipation has hit its climax, so to speak, it's like, Okay, now what? Do we just resign ourselves of of you know if you're a Christian and you're 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 happy with the election result, do you resign yourself to well now now I'm done? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that that we're talking about this today because um, I was actually at a a leadership dinner for some of the volunteers here at at Lighthouse. Okay. And um, it was a great great dinner little guest experience chat. Love it. Um, and one of the volunteers, he and I were talking afterwards, and we just very organically started talking about um, about Post Tuesday. I don't even remember how it came up, but um, he said something that he said, I'm just, I'm concerned that the church is going to respond with passivity. Huh. Um <clears throat> Now that, that, that some people 
are happy with how things went that they're going to resign themselves to okay i don't have to do anything now that's what i said isn't it it is and that's that's what i told him i said well it's really funny that you say that because sammy and i are going to chat about that I, on the podcast because he's he's a listener and um <clears throat> i was like well i don't think this is coincidental that that you're mentioning this right uh. now and i was like what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so, you know, he and I chatted for a little bit about that of like, okay, well, what does it look like? What should the church do Absolutely. in response? Um, and so I know both you and I have some various thoughts on that, but just agreeing with the, the stage that you set, um, I don't want to generalize. Like, I know that there, there are Christians who are very unhappy with the results Absolutely. of this election. And there are, and so I think what we're trying to do is speak to, it doesn't matter where you fall there. Like 100%. You, like you, no matter whether you're happy or whether you're um, distraught, like your, your course of action as a Christian should be the same. Um, I, I would hope that, that your course of action as an, um, as an American should be similar, but I think we're going to hold believers to a higher standard of what, okay, what do you do now? Absolutely. I'm really glad you said that because uh, notwithstanding, you know, the, or ra better said, better said, you know, no matter what side of, of the election you fell on, rather, rather, <clears throat> whether, rather, whether win or defeat, the responsibility of the kingdom pilgrim. Please don't. <laughs> I won't. I'm not going to do it back. But for those of us that are passing through to the celestial city, oh you did gosh. it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I have to. It, it, the responsibility is equal. Is equal. Now, the disparity sometimes is where we give the emphasis to the responsibility. But I don't want to get into that. I, I, I really don't. Because, I, you know, if you consider the election, there was some that were really, really concerned with, you know, the Republican candidate Trump winning because they felt like that would be um, really disparaging on the vulnerable, the marginalized, the lack of love, yada, yada, yada. The other side felt actually, no, this is how we accomplished that. And so you can really get into the weeds of... Um, all of these, you know, minors, but I believe that there's some majors here. Here's what I know in medieval Europe, oh, act, mm -hmm. hard, in medieval, hard turn. <laughs> yep, hard turn in medieval Europe, when culture was really, really debased and culture was really, really, um, oh, it was terrible. You know, you know, boots, I, sometimes just as a quick aside, I think so often we talk about in present day just the immorality and the gross sort of, you know, lack of, of love one towards another and the influx of an information age that's made us grossly individualistic and even progressive movements and progressive legislation and even very unbiblical practices of sexuality and the like will often say it's a really dark time. I often go, hey, we don't even, we pale in comparison to like the medieval times. The medieval times were rough, rough times of gross immorality, gross poverty, gross sexuality, gross patriarchy, gross um, tyranny, a million and one things. That is often sort of my go-to era of where I go, thank you, Jesus, mm. I wasn't born then. They had a lot of mud. You ever think about the medieval times? It was often muddy, and it seemed like it rained all the time back then. <laughs> you're, Maybe that's you're just like, the movies. That <laughs> you know, you know that like um, that trend that was going around like a year ago or something was like, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? Like for men, <laughs> yours is how often do you think about the medieval period? Oh, the medieval times <laughs> scares me to death. Everybody was always dirty. It seemed like, uh, and all the clothes were always drab and like burlap and tan. Well. They all dressed like Jesse Freeman. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God, forgive me. Anyway, let's get back on track. Sure. Where were you going with that? 
<laughs> um, th th that I think th that they, the high church, the high church of England really instituted very intentional things so as to course correct culture. Mm. And it started with the base of Jesus followers, <clears throat> that if we are going to infect and affect the culture in which we find ourselves, then it starts with us. I just want to say to my fellow brothers and sisters, no matter what side of the aisle you fell on when it came to this election, that the responsibility and the mantle and the commission is now on us. It's our responsibility. I did not vote for a pastor to actually lead the charge. I voted for the right to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I think that right now, with as much as happened, much that's been sort of, you know, pushed upon us leading up to the election. I'm not just talking in the political arena. I'm just talking culturally and societally. I am saying that right now I have like this fresh inspiration. And I feel like I would have had that no matter who would have won. I think our time is right now. It's our time right now to sort of recalibrate and be the hands and feet, be the church of Jesus Christ, to live for the audience of one and the glory of one. But we got to know what our part is to play. And it's not complex. It's not. It's very biblical and it's very simple. And it's, you know, I, I've been using this verse as of late often, whereas the, the, the prophet of old said, walk to the crossways and look and consider the ancient paths and follow the good way. Turn not to the left or to the right. And when you walk in it, there will be flourishment and prosperity. This is simply doing what Jesus has called us to do. And so what I, 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 I want to use this for is I want to take a look at what is it that the church of Jesus Christ, not of Latter-day Saints, <laughs> but the church of Jesus is called to do to affect the culture around us. I'm not talking about starting a culture war. I'm just talking about being the bright light, the city on a hill, um, uh, the light of the world that Jesus has commissioned his church to be. And I think it gets very practical, but it must be very clear. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. I want to go back to the Church of England in... in um, both Western, West, specifically Western Europe. But um, the church in that day was the intellectual power. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and really monks and bishops taught classical subjects. They made it that, that was their, their priority, like grammar and logic, but interwoven in their sort of intellectual teaching they would interweave what it was to be a follower of Jesus. Mm. And they would root their students in certain things that I really feel like the church is in the sort of groundswell of doing. But it once it, it started with really intentional spiritual practices and spiritual disciplines. Mm. I love this. I love this. So before, so right now, I would say number one, number one, before we affect the world out there, I am exclusively responsible mm -hmm. to affect the world, not only in here, that sounds very sort of ethereal, but I'm called to affect the world within the four walls of my home. Mm -hmm. So number one, as a follower of Jesus, the spiritual practices <clears throat> and disciplines of intimacy with Jesus through prayer and his word, the application of his word in the context of family, parenting, and marriage, and leading a, a intentional, rhythmic, and quiet life is absolutely essential. You're saying mind your business. Mind your business. Yeah. What I mean by that is we got to slow down. If you had to say, surmise that, Sammy. Surmise that, Sammy. Slow down and connect with Jesus. Okay. And don't and do not expect the church to be your lifeline for your spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. You 
you, me, Beck, Connor, Boots, we are responsible for stewarding our spiritual maturation and intimacy with Jesus. So before I get to point my finger at culture and say, I want to change it out mm -hmm. there, yeah. it is absolutely essential that I start right here. Yeah, inside out leadership. I've heard it said, <clears throat> you, you break it down like, God leads me, I lead me, I lead others. Uh, <laughs> let me say that again. I like that. I like <laughs> I lead that. <laughs> <laughs> God leads me, I lead me, I lead others in that order. You Amen. Don't, you don't start with, let, I'm me, let me influence up. culture. Let me shape things out there. No, it starts here. It starts with your own personal discipleship, and you are the catalyst in that. No one else is. Absolutely. And I think that's why the church has been labeled as either hypocrites or very duplicitous, because we've made the priority out there rather than in here. I feel like, I, I don't know about you, and Beck, I like your way in on this. I just feel like a lot of talk and a lot of sort of, uh, of, of feel is sort of this renaissance of sort of a slower, quiet, more intentional life personally, personally. And I, I, I hate, this isn't, this isn't a, um, a plug, but it is, it's much more in keeping with the Apostle Paul saying, lead a quiet life, mind your own business, and work heartily with your own hands as unto the Lord. So as not to be dependent upon anybody, this is what will truly win the respect of non-believers. Mm -hmm. There's almost a return or, yeah. or an emphasis of that. A return might be too grandiose, but an emphasis. I don't, I, I don't think it is grandiose. I think that the, <clears throat> the pendulum is swinging back that way because you have you know, I think a fatigue and an exhaustion huh. of the, well said. the social media era, which you know, we talked about with Asher. Right. And it's just like, I think people are getting sick of the, everything I do is on display for everyone where yes. it's like, I'm so sick of, you know, putting my stuff out there and, and hearing all your stuff. Like, let me just lead a quiet life. Uh, amen. You know, and that's why you have people, you know, especially <laughs> Christians like returning to the homesteading stuff. And like, I just want to be I you want know, chickens. Yeah, I just want to have my own chickens <laughs> and just do my own thing. I'm totally I'm getting off social media. I'm, yep. I'm not going to tune into the news. You know, I'm going to I'm going to return to this kind of quiet life. And Amen. I think I think it's really good. And and it, it's, we're I. just returning to the ancient way and it was always the healthier option. Amen. Amen. All right, so that's my number 1. Now it's your turn. This is going to be an interesting way of, of doing this because <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to like step on your, your track. Of, Can of I speak what... to that? Yeah. Oh, please. For a second. Oh, here, here we come. <laughs> I've, so, I don't know if I ever, if Beck has ever asserted herself to say, can I, can I chime in? Hey, I let wish me speak you to would that. do more of it, Beck. <laughs> um, usually I don't know what to say so that's why I don't chime in but no um before you move on to your next point I agree with what you're saying because do you remember pre-covid we were all about like minimalist lifestyle right huh. that whole movement was kicking in totally you had um Marie Kondo where it was like get rid of things that don't give you joy and like simplifying your life and then covid hit we had a bunch of time on our hands and we got involved in everybody's business yeah. and we crossed that line. And I think people now are finally like, I want to go back. Amen. Yeah. So that's yep. all I had to say. I nope. see it culturally. I 100% agree. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, COVID also forced us online. Totally. You know, which, which totally em emphasized the, yep. you know, the interconnectedness in some of those social media ways. Um, but if you want, I can give, I can give mine. Okay. I just don't want to step on. Oh no, no, Bobby. I'm, I'm, I, I, I got things in the chamber, but <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to hog the mic. Okay. Well, I'll break it down in. I'm just going to give all three of mine. Oh, okay. Um, and I'll only unpack one of them very briefly. Okay. But I thought of it in this lens. Number one, we lower our voices. Number two, we lift our eyes. And number three, we raise our hand. Mm. So I'll talk about... Boots. Okay, pastor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'll talk about lower our voices. To me, that's the matter of, of peacemaking. Mm. Um, that you have this division and, you know, everybody's calling for unity. Okay, unify us to what? 
Yeah. You know, what are, what are we uniting under? Right. Um, I think that there's a call for Americans to, to unite as Americans and understand that there's more that we have in common than that separates us. But I think as believers, you know, we certainly need to unite with one another, understanding we're all in the family of God. Um, but more so beyond that, like, we believe every human is created in the image of God. Amen. And so um, if, if we can't unite under that mindset, I don't know how we will. And it was funny. I was talking to this guy last night. I don't want to um, say who it is just in case he's not comfortable with that. But um, <clears throat> tell us afterwards. <laughs> yeah. He was saying how, um, you know, some people, he, he's, he's in close proximity to, um, to people who are like in more of the counseling field. Yeah. And um, his, his contact was saying how, you know, there are some people who are coming in for counseling sessions and, you know, they have said, I have, I have had to cut out everyone in my life who voted for Trump. Okay. And, um, you know, he and I kind of went back and forth on, on what, what leads someone to, to come to that mindset. Yeah. But he said something that was striking. He said, we need to get to the point where we recognize that that is a soul. Mm. And, and wh whether, we, whether we agree with the premise that they came to or not, whether we agree in part, but maybe not to that you know, extent, um, that's somebody who, who perhaps is believing a lie or who, who perhaps is being you know, led by, by fear. Yeah. And we need to see them with that compassion and with, with that care and, and understand this is somebody who is deeply loved by God. Amen. And this is someone that we as the church, our primary, um, our primary motive should be to reach them. Mm. Um, and so I say all that to say, I think the church and I think Americans and I think, you know, whatever side you fell on, it's probably time to, to lower your voices and focus more on uh, being a peacemaker, yeah, and and a unifier. I love um, that. Amen. Either culturally, politically, certainly, we as Christians we want to unify people and be reconcilers, absolutely, um, one to another and and to Jesus Himself. Yeah, Amen. So, so you I, and I like that, Baba. You, you lower your voice, lift your eyes, lift your hands. Yeah, and I obviously haven't spoken to the other two, but but yeah. Lower your voice. That's supposed to be about reconciliation, unification, um, and and you know, circling back to what um, Sig talked about, like relate relationships. Like that totally. that that is what is most most important. Absolutely. Um, you know, Thanksgiving's coming around the corner, mm. and you've already heard. I'm sure on both sides. You know, um, if you have if, if you voted this way, like, don't bother coming to Thanksgiving. I've seen people post on Instagram and Facebook, like, if you did this, you might as well unfriend me. Uh -huh. A, I get an attitude when I see that. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Like, <laughs> if you if you want to put that boundary in place, go for it. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's so crazy to me. Like, these are your fellow Americans. Amen. Um, and, or, these are your fellow Christians. This is your family. You're going to spend an eternity with these people. Absolutely. Um, maybe don't unfriend them. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I get know, that we have disagreements, but how, how can we work through those civilly, peacefully, and, and from a place of unity? Absolutely. That's good. That's good. Um, and now I'm like, and you're number two. <laughs> you see, this is why I didn't want it to be like, no, I like that. I like that. Actually, that gives me, it's, I got a lot of different thoughts going on, but, um, I think that's a very concise and really holistic way of how do we live? How do we live now in the fury of 2024, fast approaching 2025, lower our voice, lift our eyes, lift our hands. Um, it's lives of, I, I love that. I love that. Practically speaking, then I think here's what I want to do. I want to underpin that. Now he's just going to commandeer my points. <laughs> I am. I am. But 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 you're going you're gonna to enhance. I'm not them. going to steal them. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to give. I'm going to give guts to them. Go for it. Because you said 
that, that you won't. So I would say, and I think yours and I, you know, yesterday, just for everybody's essay, Boots and I, when we were talking about this episode, I said, Boots, what I'd like to hear from you, and I was very intrigued to, 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 and, and wondered, I wonder what Boots would say, hey, our marching orders going forward are this. And I wonder if they would coalesce with mine, if they would disagree with mine. So just for everybody's awareness, we, we didn't, we didn't pre-plan this to, and I didn't know what you were going to say. I wanted to see if they would coalesce, if they would conflict, <clears throat> what have you. And so I think they very, very much coalesce because I would say this, and I'm going to get a little more practical or a little more tangible. Yeah. I would say first and foremost, it's the application of and the practicing of spiritual disciplines and practices, as I, as, as I said, um, starts with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that very much is congruent with lowering your voice. I would say, secondly, it's the celebration. Let me, let me just chime in on that real quick yeah. and say, I, I don't think you can lower your voice until you have the internal peace within yourself 100%. that only comes through those, those spiritual practices of connecting with Jesus. Absolutely. Hence, Psalm 131, David said, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child within me. So is my soul quieted like a child that's been weaned from his mother, Me meaning that initially the weaning process creates a lot of outcry and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of irritation. But once you crest the sort of the discipline, your soul then does find contentment and it does find solace and it does find sort of, you know, haven from all the clamor and volume. But that's on you. That's why it's a spiritual discipline. David said, I have calmed and quieted my soul. So it really does be, it really does become a spiritual discipline and practice. Second to that is, I think another way of really raising your eyes is that I think, Boots, for the church, that we need to be a people that is heard for celebrating and promoting good things. Hmm. The, the, now, now, the, the, just so everybody's awareness, the, the, this is not n novel to me. Um, or, or this is, doesn't originate with, with my thoughts. This was the practice of the Church of, of England, hmm. that they, they made it within their monasteries and in, in, in the instruction to their students, that they were told sort of the, 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 the golden rule, you know, don't treat others like you wouldn't want to be treated. And, hey, don't speak ill of others if you don't want to be spoken ill of. All of that was sort of, you know, um, surmised in the practice if you are, and, and scripture says, hey, let your words be few, but let your words be seasoned with grace and beneficial and edifying to the hearer. That means that we need to be known more for what we're for than what we're against. I'm not saying that we don't speak about the fallacies and the deceptions of this present age. I'm a truth teller. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to be very vocal about what I believe people are being indoctrinated by that's, that's anti-God. But if that becomes my only drumbeat, I lose my influence. That we should be people that promote good culture and good society by promoting and celebrating good things. And good things come from Jesus. Mm. So that becomes a practical lifestyle of worship. I'm going to speak and celebrate about God's handiwork. Hey, whether it's through the form of beauty, art, entertainment, his blessings, little miracles that show up on the daily. Hey, my kids, how God is, has gifted. I don't care if it's a good meal, a, a good afternoon, a good season of life, a good unexpe un unexpected blessing. Um, uh, the, the relationships that I have, um, the peace that, I, that resides in my heart, I want to be more known for celebrating and promoting good things because the slippery slope is we can constantly talk about the negative things mm -hmm. because, be, because they're in abundance.
And I think the church vacillates a little bit between being known more for what we're against and more for what is life-sucking rather than life-giving hmm. that ultimately gives glory to our Father in heaven. And so that's a very practical, the church needs to, be retur needs to return to being a bright light, the city on a hill that celebrates and promotes good things and doesn't get entangled as much in the negative bad things. Yeah, and being just known for gratitude. Mm. And that starts with, you know, your thinking process and yep. um, whatsoever things are good, lovely, pure, excellent, good report, like think on these things. Absolutely. Um, that's what lends itself to <clears throat> being known for those things. When it came to lifting your eyes, th that was very much so what I had in mind uh. for this point is it's like um, kingdom first. Yeah. Um, and and also this idea of we should be, to, to use the rather cheesy phrase, but hope dealers. Hope dealers. Hope yeah. dealers. Spiritual gangsters. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> we should be so, so kingdom focused and so grateful and so uh, hopeful yes. that, that that is contagious to, to those around us. Amen. Um, yeah, and, and I just think that that's, that's healthier for our own souls. And totally. that's, that's, to your point, um, if we are known more for the things that we're for rather than those things that we're against, that's going to be more effective anyway. 100%. So, yeah. 100%. But, but, but know this, and, and I know you would agree with this, that is a byproduct of being with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't force your way there. No. And you have to actually believe it. <laughs> like, you have, like, you, you in order, have to believe In it. order to be hopeful, you actually need to um, resolve within yourself of like, okay, I believe that at, at some, some point, he is going to make all things new. There Amen. will be a new heaven and a new earth. And like, this is not ultimately my home, though I'm going to steward it well for the time being. Like, I have a hope. Um, that, that things are going to work out in the end. We win in the end, whatever, whatever it looks like right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't fake that. You can, only, you can only get there by being with him and trusting him. Absolutely. Do you, do you actually trust that he's going to do that? Totally, totally. And it, you, you know, you know that, that's a, that's a I, I noticed with my own kids, when I, when I am with my kids, or I'm with Silas, even Asher, but Silas right now, I, I, he and I are, are, um, we got a lot of invested time together because he tried out for the basketball team. Um, he was really nervous as to whether or not that he would make it. I would take him to practices and I would watch him and then I would coach him up following and yada, yada, yada. And I just realized that I, 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 I knew this season right here is about intense encouragement. Hmm. Um, I, I'm I'm not I'm not a baller, so my skill set when it comes to hooping ain't 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 there. So I knew you know, I, I was trying to picture it and it yeah, didn't didn't nah, come very nah. readily. I could teach him how to shop, and my skill set <clears throat> is on fire. However, I can when it, dribble into H and M, <laughs> but when it comes to playing ball, I'm I'm not so good. So all I knew is, hey, that's the coach's job. Coach is going to skill him up. Me. It's when we, we walked out of the school, I'm going to be his biggest cheerleader walking down, down the steps into the car and on our ride yeah. home. When he's getting ready to go to... Does he receive that well? Um, he does. Mm. He does. Yeah, he, yeah, he, uh, Silas's love language is words of encouragement. And so he likes that to sort of wash over him. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and, and at times, he's not listening. <laughs> Um, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the, the, a telltale of, of whether or not it's your love language, you solicit for it a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, how was that? How to do? How to do? How to how'd I look? You know, did you, see, did you see that, you know, that one shot? So I make it very intentional, like, because the reality is, moms, dads, y'all are going to know exactly what I'm talking about with this. I, although I don't know how to ball, I will sit on courtside and I know a million and one things he's doing wrong. Hmm. Like I, I, I can see that. Yeah. Doesn't take a rocket science. Bend your knees, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Shots all off, you know, <clears throat> Hey, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't set the pick. 
the whole nine yards. I can see that. I know the fundamentals enough to be like, man, you were lost in the sauce. Nevertheless, I can choose one direction or another. My direction is I'm just going to be his cheerleader. And when I'm his cheerleader, when I, I was going somewhere with this, I, I watch him, whether it's the car ride home, the afternoon after, what have you, he's very, he's, he's much quicker to really celebrate the good things that's happening in his life. Mm. The, he, he has a, 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 a better, he has almost a, a, a degree of rose colored lens of the optimism k- kicks in, the expectation kicks in that, wait a minute, I think, I think I'm gonna do this thing. I can do this thing. His degree of confidence kicks in. Why do I say all that? When you spend time with Jesus, and you let his love and his affection wash over you, and you realize not only does he love me, he actually likes me, that he fearfully and wonderfully created me, and he celebrates me, that he sings over me, as the psalmist would say, and that he says, hey, I never want to leave you. I don't, I don't want to be away from you. There becomes this sort of inherent, wait a minute, I'm hopeful. Hmm. Wait a minute. I can do this thing called life because it's, life is, is a butt kicker, man. It's hard out there, but it's really, really hard when I am giving constant emphasis to promoting and talking negative and despairing. It sucks the life out of you. Mm-hmm. And I think the church can fall in that rut. But if we practice spiritual disciplines and practices of being with our maker, the byproduct becomes that we celebrate and promote good things. And, it, and it's not contrived. I hate contrived. I hate it. I hate it. I'm a realist, so I'm always trying to judge. Is that authentic? You legit? You trying to be holier than thou? Is that self-righteousness? Are you putting on an act? Everybody has a lens for that. All the more in a cynical environment like ours. But you know when somebody has been with him and their lens is, I want to celebrate and promote good things. Mm-hmm. I, they're not blind to the negative things. They just choose, I'm not going to give emphasis to that. I don't mm-hmm. want to. It doesn't benefit me or you. I love that. And the church has to return to that, mm-hmm. has to get back. Because we're not a city on a hill whose light cannot be hidden when all we're doing is trying to dispel lies. You, we should be doing that but it shouldn't come at the expense of worship. Yeah. Number three, I digress. <laughs> does that make sense? It does. <laughs> <laughs> they just weave them all in. Number three, celebrating and promoting good things then gives segue to becoming people of, and you said it, so you said it first, you get, you get cred, is that we got to be people of compassion and grace, empathy and care. Like, like, like my man said, whoever that was, he said, we got to see these people as a soul, mm-hmm. not as an op. They're not, they're, 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 they're not our opposition yep. or our enemy. They're not our disagreement or the people on the other side. They're not. That's a soul. That's an image bearer of God. But that will never, ever happen unless you're connected to the vine. It, that, that, that'll never happen. That'll be what you should do but you really don't have anything to do. Yeah, can't, you, you ain't, can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. So I think, I think spiritual disciplines, practices, promoting, celebrating good things, which is worship, that then you become a people that's compassionate and loving um, because you have the spirit of God that dwells within you. So you see clearly and objectively, um, we're too much dividers. Mm-hmm. That's my responsibility. I am not putting spiritual disciplines, practices, promoting and celebrating good things, and being compassionate and empathetic. That is not politics responsibility. Individually, if they're Jesus followers, that's their mandate to walk in. That's my responsibility. I'm the follower of Jesus. I'm the image bearer. I'm the light of the world. I'm the one called to, to represent a heavenly kingdom and an incredible king 
that's my responsibility. The church has got to get back to that. Yeah, yeah. And my the way that I coined this one was was raise your hand. And mm. and I know that that in our Christian context that kind of that could go, and maybe it has a double meaning of like raise your hand and worship. But I that's actually not the way that I meant it. <laughs> the way that I meant it was more so like, oh, that's the way I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 puppy. Um, raise your hand to to volunteer, in the sense mm. of okay, so we have this mindset of. Um, you know, unifying and, and rooted in the practices and, and the hope that that brings us and then dwelling on the good things and being grateful and having an overfill of, of love and compassion, that should compel us to raise our hands toward action, toward volunteering to, okay, Ooh, what do you good. practically do? Oh, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Like, not I'll raise do it. your hand. Yeah, yeah. Not, not like the not- worship emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah, how I Raise your it. hand <laughs> to volunteer. I'll do it. Yes. I'll do it in the sense of, A, what is, what is your direct sphere? What are the things that are directly within your control to have, to have an influence on? And, and who are the people? You know, you're talking heavily about encouragement. Who are the people in your life that you can be encouraging right now? Yeah. Um, who are the people that you can speak hope and light into? Uh. Uh, who are the people that, that, that you can be a unifier with? And then also, you know, what are the things that you can actually practically work on to improve? You know, whether it is, you know, just very simply, like, be a good citizen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. be a model citizen. Amen. Um, be a good neighbor. Like, look for ways. To, go introduce yourself. Go introduce yourself. Look for ways to to bless your neighbors. To Grab su- their trash can. Surprise them it. with generosity. It's right next to yours. <laughs> Don't tip it over. Yeah. Don't blow past. And get the yellow one, too. <laughs> Pull them both up yeah. there. <laughs> I called that the yellow trash can. <laughs> um, yeah. L- I mean, look for ways to, to bless your servers when you go out go out to eat. Amen. Um, be a good son, son, uh, daughter, husband, wife, father, mother, et cetera. It. Like, look for ways to raise your hand and say, I am going to be a blessing. I am going to be a, a force for the kingdom because that's my mindset. I'm kingdom first. Um, I'm a unifier, and I'm going to lift my eyes to heaven. I'm going to lower my voice, and I'm going to raise my hand of, of what can I actually do, what's actually within my control, and I'm going to do it. Amen. I love it, Boots. You know what my fourth was? It's the same as what you said. Yeah. It is. We got to get good at dying. Oof. And that's it. You know, I'm studying. Uh, uh, Let me guess. You know what? I'm going to. The, the English medieval church. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm studying through the book of Malachi right now. And God comes to him. This would be the last time God speaks to him. In many ways, it was sort of like uh, we, we're, we're going through a series where we've got, call, called it Define the Relationship, where God is in many ways defining his relationship with his children. And in many ways, it's an audit. It's an audit and they get a report card and uh, and it's by and large an epic fail. (laughs) It's like a big F with a a red circle around it. And what his, uh, in, in chapter two, God really comes to him in so many ways he says to him, you have two directions as my covenant people that you that you could approach life with. And it really boils down to diet. You can either feed your spirit, which keeps my covenant. And what he meant by that is you're my covenant people. So you're so now I identify you as mine. In 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 ancient Israel, your family lineage and name identified you not only in who you are, but then it dictated everything you did. You never lived without a conscientious thought of who you represent. Yeah. Today, it's built into your name. Oftentimes. It's built into your name. So you don't buy trade without <clears throat> knowing I represent my father. You do not engage in relationships, marriages, um, connectivity 
without knowing I come as an ambassador on behalf, on behalf of my father. You did not live in certain places when you knew I'm connected to my father. Everything was dictated by your identity and by the covenant you had with family. God said, now that you're my chosen people, you have desecrated the covenant and you've taken on your own identity. And rather than feeding your spirit, you've fed your stomach. That you've made it about your want. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed, man. This was 2,500 years ago. The people did that. We do it this day. Where he says, now that you're a king's kid, live representing the kingdom. Now we give way to our own individuality, our own emotional impulses, our desired wants, our flesh, our feels, our whatever. So if somebody wrongs us, they're dead to me. If somebody slights us, we slight them back. If, um, if, we want, if sin tells us not to do something, but our flesh craves it, we disregard God's command. We give, we give way to it. And he comes to him and says, I, you break my heart because you're mine and you represent me. But not only do you break my heart, but because you're not a covenant people, you don't care about the covenants you have with your own family. And what that meant was the children of Israel, they now were, were one. Like you just said, you're going to spend eternity with Bill and Sue and Joe. And because you, they, they've offended you or you don't like something within them, you've just, you've just cleaned slate with them. And you've moved on. And what my covenant with you commands is that you keep covenant with them. So essentially he said, so die to yourself and die to your stomach. Hmm. Like, don't, don't feed you. <clears throat> feed that. Why? Because I was gracious and I rescued you and I love you and I'm the one that grafted you. So now go do that with your brother that you got ought with. That takes death. And what I think practicing the way of Jesus or getting back to what we need to as a church, the world looks into the church and sees us just divided as the world. Because we don't care about dying anymore. We don't have to die. I'm, I'm here to do me. I'm going to do me, boo-boo. And so if that comes at the expense of my relationship with my fellow family member, well, hey, that's just the price I'm willing to pay. Yeah. We got to get back to learning how to die because that's really where you learn to live. Mm. And I think the church needs to get to a place of spiritual disciplines and practices I think it needs to get to a place of celebrating, promoting good things. I think it needs to extend compassion and grace that comes from our being connected to the vine. And that, and that by the power of the Spirit, we learn to die once again, to be that city on a hill. That is what changes and shapes culture, mm -hmm. not just railing against it. A lot of this, no this. <laughs> I think we got to get back to the basics. Agreed, my friend. Also known as, lower your voice, lift your eyes, volunteer your hands. Yeah. Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I clarified that. Cause yeah. I was like, I'm, I, I, I can do hey, that. I'll raise my hand and worship all day. <laughs> well, that's good, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for yes. listening to this episode and this season. It's, mm. it's been a fun one. And uh, we'll be back in the undetermined length of time, <laughs> a couple months, I reckon. Um, We're coming back bigger and better than ever. That's right. That's right, we are. That's right, we are. We're always. I love to overpromise and underdeliver. And it's just us, same outfits. I know. So, yeah, I would say um, this is your opportunity to, to go back and maybe check some episodes that you missed along the way. Um, also send us some suggestions, perhaps. Becca, anything, any last encouraging words for them that we need, we would want them to do on the break? Yeah, we'll just be um, interacting on Instagram, so okay. if you're on there, Oh yeah, like, follow, and, uh, review. Instagram, yeah, and we're, we're, I think we're going to be posting stuff during yep. the break. And TikTok. TikTok, that's right, apparently. Oh, you TikTokers, yo. Yeah, you TikTokers. All right. Love you guys. <laughs>